All righty. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on TCG Gaming's live AMA. This is number AMA number 18. We have been doing uh, AMA after AMA about just about every week. Uh, and this week was a little special because uh, we didn't just do one AMA. This is now our third in a row back to back. Uh, there's a lot of things going on right now with TCG World. A lot of really neat announcements. Uh, and we didn't want to wait a couple weeks before announcing them. We want to get the good news out to you now. We got Christmas around the corner. It's time for some good news. Uh, so uh, today we have uh, quite the show, uh, I could say, for you. We have a, we have quite a bit of, of a good crew uh, that we're going to be meeting and getting to learn about today. Uh, just a quick uh, parental advisory uh, today might be a little bit more PG-13 uh, than uh, some of the past AMAs that we have had. Uh, we got we got a group of some people that, man, they are real, they are raw, uh, and uh, and we're so excited to have them on board. Uh, and uh, in that being said, uh, welcome. Whether you're in the morning or afternoon or evening, wherever you are in the world, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Alex. I'm the Director of Business Development for TCG. And uh, today, like I said, we have quite the show. So the agenda for today is the very first thing is we're going to be announcing a new partner. In fact, it's going to be two new partners uh, all on the same call. We have a good group of gentlemen that are ready to meet you here in just a little bit. After that, uh, I'm going to do a quick weekly uh, recap of what happened in, with this last week with TCG. We had a lot happen. Uh, if you caught our AMA that we did earlier this morning, uh, or the AMA that we did yesterday, you see that we're doing a lot right now. So I'm just going to kind of recap everything real quick for everybody in case you missed an AMA. And then at the end of it, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be dropping some news, uh, uh, from our development side and our company side of things. Uh, you're going to want to stay to the end of this AMA, uh, as I'm going to be sharing a couple things with y'all. Uh, and then at the end of it, we like to have a true AMA. We like to have people ask questions. We like to uh, answer them. And uh, and we're very open door policy here at TCG. So if you got questions and you want a, and you want a quick answer, we, not only do we have moderators and leadership on the call right now to help answer them, but I'm also going to be picking out uh, questions that I can talk about at the end of this video as well. Uh, but when I say you want to stay to the end, you're going to want to stay to the end. Uh, but as everyone knows, I like to kick things off with the good stuff. Uh, so today we have a partnership announcement. TCG is officially partnering with Valor and Greed Token. I have a couple uh, individuals on the call today that you may recognize uh, from the real world. And I'm going to bring them in right now. We have quite the lineup today. Uh, hello, gentlemen. What's going on, man? How are you? <laughs> Good. Hey. So we so uh, we have a very diverse lineup here. So what's kind of fun about today's AMA is uh, with a lot of our partners, they're in the NFT world or they're in the education part or university. Today we're kind of bringing in two separate kind of industry titans uh, and introducing more elements and experiences within the metaverse. Uh, and so I'm just going to kick it right off with, uh, with Captain Awesome here. Uh, welcome, my friend. Thank you. And it's, you know, it's Captain MF Awesome. You know oh, what the gotcha. MF stands for? <laughs> mystical Fairy. Oh, See, Mystical I told, Fairy. I told you. Listen, I could tone it down. I told you. We're going to keep <laughs> it a captain. this program. <laughs> you don't have to worry. I told you I could tone it down. Oh, so, so, yeah. Funny. Well, well, guys, I am doxed. My real name is Peter Parente, but I guess, you know, I got the, the title Captain Awesome before crypto and we just kind of stuck with it. And uh, just real quick, I, I'm the lead developer of Baby Doge Inu, which is part of the Greed ecosystem. It was just the first launch because the Greed was a major project. And uh, just a quick on my background, I do that because it's a the project's a big undertaking and, you know, you want to kind of know that someone can handle it. I'm going to... Go quick as possible because we have just a star-studded cast to get to here, and, I, and I'm just Captain Awesome. But these other guys are even more awesome. So they're general uh, awesomes. Yeah. So we go back. You know, I'm 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 not a, I'm not a young in here. We go back to 1992. I went to the Marine Corps, spent my time there, Marine Recon. I was um, specializing in counter sniper operations. 
by the time I got out, I was sniper team one for the Marine Corps. So when we were the readiness force, it means uh, myself and my sniper partner were called out for the highest priority mission. So, you know, a week after getting out in 1996, I went uh, and I decided I wanted to make money. I saw that's when the stock brokerage industry was just taken off. Uh, a friend said, hey, come check out my place. I walked up and I saw Ferraris, Lamborghinis and all these cars. I'm like, OK, how do I start? So from 1997 on, I was basically 23 years old running brokerage firms. You know, I guess it was my, my military background and structure that, you know, I, I was in charge of, you know, guys in their 40s with families. And ever since then, it's been stocks. I've got licenses in stocks, commodities, uh, management there. Uh, and then the last 15 years, I took my talents and became a business consultant specializing in marketing. But, you know, most of the companies that came to me, they came to me and had problems. And I don't mean small companies. I dealt with major corporations and they come to me with their problems. I didn't know anything about their industry. So I'd quickly learn it. I'd solve their problems and then figure out ways to take them to the next level. So we'll fast forward all the way through. I finally got bored with, um, you know, business and just over it and dealing with the I was working with law firms and everything else and I just I came full circle so you know in between I did have a couple little ops I did working for the uh the CIA and then um my son was born fast forward to him being 14 years old and I'm like he's a young man now he had a great base and I talked to him because I just the business wasn't doing it for anymore I wanted to get back into um operating uh I hate using that word I went, I signed a, a private military contract for a special ops team in Afghanistan at 46 years old. I was training up, getting ready to go. This, this team was only recon um, SEALs and Army SF. And the job was to basically rescue people under siege, uh, rescue people that were kidnapped, uh, evacuate people from areas under siege or uh, you know, neutralized threats. And, you know, 46 years old, started training, got myself into shape again in a young man's game. But I got in an accident, a car accident. It wasn't my training that did it, car accident. And I tore my rotator cuff. My arm was on the steering wheel and boom. So that dream was gone. And I didn't know what I was going to do. And I just said, you know, I didn't want to work. I didn't, I didn't, just didn't know. I was, I, I really wanted to get back with the boys back on, you know, in the, in the combat field. Yeah. And I said, you know what? I just thought I'm like, I'm going to trade crypto, started trading crypto and I saw some really good stuff and I saw some bad and, and it just, you know, because of my business consulting years, I like to problem solve. And I was like, you know what, if I could just build something, bring the people what they want, what they're looking, what everyone promises. If I could bring you what everyone shows on their roadmaps and their white papers that they promise, but actually do it, it would be huge. So you know, that's when I reached out to Ted K. Ted's, I don't know, I'm pointing, he's there maybe. That's Ted, but Ted, raise Down. your hand. <laughs> Ted, Ted, raise your hand. All right, so I, I went to high school with Ted. So you guys, I don't know if you guys have heard of uh, Cool and Dre. Cool, I'm going to see, let me see, texting him to come on and wave. So Cool and Dre are on there. You see Cool's picture. They're in Dubai right now, and it's like one it's in late. the morning, really loud. So I just text them to come on and wave or something. But uh <laughs> I was like, if I'm going to do something different, let me reach out. I reach out to Ted. It's so it's, 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 it's Ted cool and Dre only the Ted silent. Yeah. So Ted's in the background there. He does all the business and everything for them. And he, he set me up a meeting with them. And, you know, one of the things I thought was I want to do something different. And I know they're innovators in music They're you know, uh, well, I'll let them talk about what they've done, but I went to, uh, to be with them. And I said, Hey, when you guys have a, a hit record, when you guys have like a hit record and like, I, you know, I think of things like they're the ones who just produced the Beyonce Jay-Z album. I'm like, how many different versions of each song do you have that, that you just have sitting there on data? And he's like, I don't know, 20, 30. Mm -hmm. So now I'm thinking, man, like that's like digital garbage. It's sitting in a digital garbage can. I was like, well, you know, everything's going, everything has its phases and music and everything. And now you went from NFTs, but like, I think music could go to my music. Brothers, my brothers. <laughs> hey, oh, baby, what what <laughs> Hello. Where, where's Dre? Yo, Ken. Yo, Ken. What up, brother? How you doing, man? Alex Ken. Hey, how you yeah, doing? Awesome. Yo, we just going to Dubai, you know, just enjoying the vibes, the rooftop right vibes, you know? Yeah, 20, 30 it's stories it's high. It's a affair, you know? Huh? Dude, dude, cool. Show, show, a, show a screenshot or a, a video of the city where you're at from the rooftop, if you can. Oh, this shit is fucking like... A Phenomenal. Hold on, yeah, yeah. Right Everybody, have a look I'm at show this. You the live walkthrough. 
I forgot to tell him about the PG-13. <laughs> no, that's fine. We're good. Yeah, check this out. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, he was trying to get to a quiet place for us. That's why. Oh, gotcha. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, that's a good song, too. Wow. Is that one of their songs? Oh. <laughs> wow. yeah. Now go jump in that pool. No, no, we got pool. the oars on deck. <laughs> yeah. You gotta jump off the top of the yeah. roof with the parachute on, man. Go free glide. Do a cannonball in the pool on video. Hey, where's Ray? <laughs> where's Ray? <laughs> I can't hear. He can't hear. Hey, hey. Oh, here we go. Hey, can you mute him? Yeah, here I'll mute him. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there we go. So, um, yeah. So, so and we can turn all our things over to Ted real quick. Oh, oh there's wait, Dre. Oh, there, there's Dre. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Before we uh, switch things over to Ted, uh, Captain, real quick. Uh, mad respect, man, for being a Marine Corps and doing the things that you do. Uh, and for for chat, I got a little bit of time to talk with him about some of his missions and stuff that he did uh prior to this ama and it, it's pretty hardcore stuff that he uh that he's been involved with and helping people saving people uh and it's a really freaking cool story and so i just got the biggest respect for you man like thank you so much for your service thank you it's a good vibe out here man it's a good vibe out here it is a good vibe a lot of crypto a lot of crypto moving out here in dubai <laughs> You gotta move it here. Move it to greed and valor. You gotta move that crypto here. Uh, oh yeah, no, no, no. Trust me, I've been spreading the word. I've been spreading the word. <laughs> give, give, oh, we, valor, greed, TCG two, all that good shit, man. Let's, <laughs> Let's go. Uh, so, all right, yes, uh, Ted. Sir. I'm gonna turn it over to you. Uh, yeah, give us a little bit of kind of who you are. Uh, I hear you. It's it's. Uh, it's Ted Cool and Dre, uh, and you're kind of the the man behind the curtain. So tell us a little bit about yourself. I'd put it Cool and Dre than Ted because I try to stay out of the limelight as much as possible. Let's go T. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So now, basically, we've been doing music a long time, uh, 20 years, staying relevant. You know, um, that's the beautiful part. We've been, it's hard enough doing music and, and, and getting get a, a, a Grammy one time, excuse me battery's dying you're fine but but to do it over the span of 20 years and to yeah. stay right that's a little different animal i've had the pleasure of working with these guys i don't make the music and i say i can't say i'm not creative because you know my job is to do everything behind the scenes make it all work yeah. but you got to know putting the right rooms together and make it all work so we start from nothing pretty much like a builder conceptualize put people in the same room make something and then go ahead and market it and sell it you know, and, and that's the beautiful thing about Cool and Dre. So I've had the benefit of being able to run the business and, and there's a lot of business surrounding the music. You know? So absolutely. That, so I do everything but make the music, you know. And it's cool to bridge all of that with crypto um, for, for multiple Super. reasons. I mean, uh, for, I know I got a lot of people that are in the music industry myself and the last couple of years have been a little brutal uh, on the music industry. But having digital assets and being able to uh, merge and transform all that into the crypto world is honestly, I believe, a game changer for the music industry, especially bringing things into the metaverse and expanding it even more, uh, I think will be a revolutionary thing for the whole music industry as a whole. Uh, and already you guys are in a really cool space and kudos for winning a Grammy, Cool and Dre and Ted, like that's that's freaking cool. Three, three of them. Three, three, of, them. <laughs> three of them. Dang. Hey, wait, that, wait, Ted. Throw something else in there. Like, for so many people that don't know, give them the names of the people that have been produced and some. Give them some of the highlights. What's going on now? You know. Right. So what you know the thing about a producer and uh, is that a lot of the producers' names aren't really known. Right. Cool and Dre's well known, and you guys aren't even in the music business, but. We're the guys that the industry comes to to make the to make the like the guys on the on the stage and the limelight come to make the magic. Yep. So, and and that's the cool thing about it. So we are on stage. Is people don't really see us mainstream. 
So at the same point, it's like the guys, we've done everything from, from like Lincoln Park to Busta Rhymes crossover. We've done Gym Class Heroes, Jay-Z, Beyonce. We've got Eminem. We've got the Latin crossovers. We've done David Gett, the electronic stuff. So it's, and Queen Latifah. It's, it's things like they've been doing it for so long with there's very few people we can't touch or I already have been in the room with. Yeah. You know? It, Hey, what about that? What about that dude behind you? I see, I see something behind you up top. I was just going to point guys, that out. Yeah. <laughs> did you know, they, they actually, what, what were they? They launched his first one, right? They made it. Oh yeah. Oh, They're yeah. all in the same network. Miami music yeah. came up, you know, so the Rosses, the Khaled, Fat Joe kind of came down and getting cool and Dre and Fat Joe kind of kicked off the, you know, obviously we had the two live crew before them. But all this new generation of music or that generation of music came from that show. You no, know, it's not like we can send the MV, uh, MP3s out back in the day. Right. They literally sent a CD, send it up. You know, he heard about that show, got on the phone, actually got in his car, drove down and got on. That's how Miami, that new generation of music kind of kicked off. That show came down and, and partnered with Cool and Dre, and they've been doing it ever since. Right. You know, so well, came on at Rick Ross and them, you know, from all that kind of kind of effect and it all started from like cool's mom's garage you know right. back in oh seriously yeah the poor neighborhood you know you had it was you know they, they they weren't wealthy growing up it was just you know normal miami neighborhood but think about it your neighbor has tour buses with a little wing dropping out of it you know what the hell is <laughs> <you know? laughs> that's so, so cool hey, Ted, what, what about today man what oh, about there there's the couple things today that are big right now there's oh jay's okay yeah. Record. And we're starting to package them more of, of, of releasing records on their own. Instead of it being just a producer on, on the credits, they're literally putting the record together themselves and releasing them as a, as a primary artist. One of the first ones we did, just kind of let them out. We worked with it is J. Cole, Wale, uh, Pop It Out. Wow. So, poke It Out. You don't even know your song, Ted. Poke It Out. Poke It Out. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> no. Yeah, <laughs> pop it out, poke it out. It's the same thing, it's right? The same it's thing. Different. It's up there. Hey, hey what did they what do? Was. <laughs> what, what was the Holly Berry movie? What was the the Holly Berry movie? It's that MMA one where she's a girl it's fighter. The, that's the one, Ken. There's more yeah. more to tell us about that. One. But yeah, we did some music for that movie as well. Not, oh, yeah. And that movie just came out, right? Yeah, yeah it's, it's out right now. Yeah, that's crazy. That's so cool. That, and, it, and it's really neat with with what with, with just how well connected you guys are. You know, starting your crypto journey. Uh, I was talking to Captain earlier. You know, a lot of coins out there like they, they spend so much in capital trying to get an influencer just to tweet about them or something, uh, or just try to get the ball moving. But you guys are already very well connected in the music industry, in the movie industry, as well as big celebs and influencers already. And so you guys have such a leg up uh in, as far as any kind of competition or anything goes and it's just so cool to see how much you have done already in just a month's time i was talking to uh cap a little bit ago and just literally just in the last month so much has been developed uh and it, that's exciting it's exciting to see where you guys are going to be headed uh and uh yeah it, we're, we're crazy excited to bring you into the metaverse it's going to be a sweet sweet platform uh for everything that you're building yeah, well, and, and part of what we're bringing there is we're going to do live streaming into the recording studio, and they've got a couple of them there, but there's the two major ones, so people can watch, you know, their favorite recording artists while they're working live, or, um, you know, newer artists, if you want to see someone up and coming, and the cool thing is, whatever they're working on, we're going to talk to them about, you know, NFTing the work that you're watching, because if you got some new kid in there, and you're like, wow, he sounds good right now, it's like getting a rookie card. And he gets some of his off tracks. Like if he's working on his main beat, he gets it. And then you take the off ones and you NFT it as a collectible. It's something you might be able to pay 50 or hundred dollars. Now, next thing you know, this kid's getting a Grammy. Now it's worth, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. So it, there, it, you're going to have your big stars and your other ones, but it's, it's a cool to be able to take the chance and go, this could be big and watch it. And then the other thing is we want to live stream, you know, concerts, impromptu concerts, you know, Ariana Grande had her, um, what was it? The, her concert in Fortnite. She sold yep. five million tickets at five dollars a piece by just doing a performance. So listen, you know, we all could do that. 
and, and without, I'm not going to get into all the tech. We'll do all our tech, and I think another time about yep. all the stuff we got going on. But I, I, what I want to do is get to next. You know, one of the things we're doing is building out a whole ecosystem. And I got to say, it fell in our lap. You know, next thing you know, here I am. We just launched. We got things going, and, and I get I get a contact like, "Hey, would you be interested in talking to um, Ken Shamrock at Ballercoin?" Would I would I be interested? I mean, that's like a dumb. <laughs> don't, that's a stupid question. You know, when they say there's no such thing as stupid questions. That's a stupid question. So yeah, <laughs> when I heard Ken Shamrock, who was just what I'm like, we got to talk about this. So we came, we started talking about, they wanted to launch a coin and they've talked to a couple other, you know, crypto developers. It's, you know, everyone's like, what we could get is tweet you up and do all the same nonsense that we talked about. And, yeah. and the funny thing is I said, listen, guys, I'm building value. You know, I'm bringing the old school, building something with value. Because when I said crypto now reminds me of the dot-com days when I was a stockbroker, you know, bought everything.com, buy a pet rock.com. Yep. Everything went to the yep. roof. And then all of a sudden, if like most people don't realize we're going like 20 years ago, 1997, I don't know, whatever it was, but so you, everything went through the roof. And then all of a sudden everyone's like, com, com, and dust settled. And then it was like, wait, hold on. What's the value. And then, you know what happened? The market crashed. Yep. The whole market crashed. It's like right now, how many Floki coins are there? Because Elon named his dog Floki. But what <laughs> value are you, think of what value are you buying? So anyway, what I explained was we're building value first. If I said, if you guys want like a quick move, I'm not the guy to help you with that. I just, I just, that's not me. And they're like, no, because it's not, listen, you got Ken Shamrock sitting there and it's Ken Shamrock, Valor BK, but he also brings a, I, I don't know, star studded. It's like he brings the most solid business team behind him. See, that's the thing. We're all businessmen coming into crypto. Mm -hmm. We're not just guys mm -hmm. launching a coin. We're building businesses. So, you know, as they explained to me, like there was a situation to launch them. I'm like, we got recording artists. They have athletes. This is perfect. And I'll tell you what, I, uh, after talking to Ken though, and learning more about him, I, I love the guy from the beginning. Like, I mean, you know, here I, I was, I was actually in the Marines. So, so I'm not, you know, since I'm older, I was in the Marines and here we are, we're like killing each other. Like hey, UFC, I'm Ken Shamrock and we're doing all this stuff trying to kill each other. So I remember watching it, but you know, you never know what it's like when you meet the actual person. Yeah. And man, I could tell you, you know what, I'm going to turn it over to Ken because you haven't heard his story. Ken, we got to hear you. Give us the story, bro. We need your full story because I was telling him before, I love the story every time I hear it. And, and, and guys, beyond the story, I can tell you, Ken wants to work. He wants to take on as much work. He's not a face. He's not an influencer. He's not a guy sitting in the background. He's in his group all the time. He visits other groups. He's asking what more he could do. And the funny thing is, like, I thought I worked hard and I'm, I joked with him. I'm like, I'm going to kill you with AMAs. I'm like, we both of us have trained physically. <laughs> And I'm like, I'm killing myself over here. Crypto's beating me up more than the Marines or anything. So I'm like, I'm going to, he's like, bring it on. Give me as much. I don't care. He'll, he will work 20. If there were 25 hours in a day, Ken will work them if you give it to him. But I think you got to hear his story, guys. It's just, it's awesome. Well, if you got about 15 minutes, I'll shoot it to you. Yeah, we got um, four hours. Let's go. All right. Uh, <laughs> well, and again, like this crypto space and, and family and community. So that really hits home with me just because kind of the way I grew up. So it's pretty cool to see a bunch of people working together and not all, but the majority of them are trying to clean the space up, get good projects in there. So for me, it was really special to get in and start listening to some of them and seeing how people are working together. But with that said, too, I thought, you know, especially going into this, when you're talking to people, they got to know who you are, right? Because they're going to invest in a project, but not just a project, but also the people behind the project. Yeah. So when I start out with my, <laughs> who I am, I always tell them, well, let me get to the end before you judge me. Cause um, the beginning is not good. Um, but like from the time I was 10 years old and a little bit younger than that, but I'm saying 10, because that was the time I was locked up. Uh, I was in juvenile hall. Um, is when I got locked up, I got stabbed um, strong arm robbery. And, and I was 10. I know a lot of people go, oh, 10 years old, but I grew up in a really bad neighborhood and I wasn't raised. And so I was pretty rough, angry, frustrated, and, uh, you know, and, and I did some damage myself to other people. So by the time I was 10 to 13, I was in and out of group homes, boys camps, work camps, ended up failing them all, ended up at the Shamrock Boys Home at 13 years old. Mm -hmm. But before I get there, I'm going to go back when I first got there. At 18, I got adopted by Bob and Dee, Dee Shamrock at this group home. And there was 18 boys in this home. So when I got there, I was 
just one of those kids that I would just stab somebody for looking at me wrong, or I'd beat them with a bat. I was just bad. And I had this whole time of being able to, you know, build this character because I was in juvenile hall or I was on the streets. So I wasn't a good kid. And so here I was at this kid going to this home and my mom and dad had to figure out who adopted me, had to figure out how they could help me. And most group homes don't give a crap anyways, right? They just want you to do your time, work your days and send you back into the same problem. Well, with me, they really tried to work on me and fix it. So what they did was they felt like because I was more outward and I wasn't artistic or drawing or any of that stuff, I was more outward with it where I beat somebody up and be angry. They thought football and wrestling would be good for me. So they put me in it. And I'll tell you what, man, that, that was the best thing to get it done for me because that anger and that frustration I had, I got to hurt people and literally get from the parents and the coaches and the kids going, nice job. And I just <laughs> knocked the crap out of a dude blowing snot bubbles and they're saying, great job. But if I did that on the street with a bat or a fist or something, I'd go, to, I'd go back into juvenile hall. But here on the football field, good job, nice job. I'm like, dude, something wrong with this world. But it worked. By the time I was a junior and senior in high school, I was relevant. I wasn't this punk kid that was going to die or be in prison by the time I was 18. Thank God. But it was like, I mean, here I turned it, this frustration, anger into something positive. And literally from that point on, I said, okay, I'm going to go to college. I played college ball. I did well there. Then I said, I'm going to go to a professional level. So I took my, my professional level to pro wrestling in Mooresville, North Carolina. And one year I became a champion. Obviously we know that's scripted, but you still got to have some, some toughness to get slammed around like that. So I did well there. Well, then I went to Japan after about a year doing that, went into a thing called Pancrase. Now, Pancrase was the very first mixed martial arts group. This was in 89, 90, 91 in Japan before UFC pride or anything. Nothing was happening but Pancras. They did a two-day tournament from fighters from all over the world in different, different styles. I won that 16-man tournament. I won that, became the very first champion in Japan. Now I'm set in Japan. I'm the champion, you know, uh, I'm this guy gene. Everybody knows me. Um, I'm good, right? Well, this thing called UFC comes out in 93. Nobody knows what it is. I saw an advertisement of it and I was like, oh my goodness. Like, this is going to be exciting. It was no rules. Like kick a guy when he's down, elbow him, headbutt him. I'm like, dude, can they let this happen? Is this allowed? And so I remember checking into it and I got in. I risked everything I already accomplished because I have vision all the way through my career of trying to do something I think is going to be popular with no guarantees that I'm going to do well at it, but I, but I know what I can do. So I was successful all the way up. And then I took this risk in the UFC. We all know what it became a $10 billion company. I was the face of that company. I was the first American champion ground zero, if you will. Wow. I was the first one, one of the first ones inducted into the UFC hall of fame. I was inducted into the Impact Wrestling Hall of Fame, the Wrestling Hall of Fame, and the San Diego, California Hall of Fame. Arnold Schwarzenegger actually wrote my letter to get me into it. So I was inducted into that. I'll add that one more than the other groups that I was in. <clears throat> but I was able to take all that and, and generate it into something more. But as we all know, not all of us, but fighters and, and fans know, when you get to a certain point in the ring, you got to do something else. Like you can't keep going. You're getting older. You're slowing down. But you're still young. So I wanted to do something different. I wanted to create a fight league, but I didn't want it to be the same as anything else. I wanted it to be disruptive. I wanted it to be look differently. I mm -hmm. wanted to have a different visual. And so I had to go back into my career and look at it and go, mm -hmm. how can I do something and make it special? And the so first rule of fight league special. is you don't talk about fight league. Yeah, that's right. Right. <laughs> and, 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 is in, in being the division of it, right. I mean, you think about it, like when I remember seeing the UFC, when it first came out, I was like this cage, man, it was unique. It was interesting. It was, it was almost like this movie, right? Like what's going to happen in it. So I want to develop something like that. When people saw it, it would be the same kind of effect. So we took it all down. There is no, no boundaries. It's literally about circle where it's sunk in and there's, there's no cage, no ropes, no fences. And you got to fight in that circle. And we did the first fight and it was fast. There was nowhere for them to go and hide, nowhere for them to lay down on. Wow. Next thing I wanted to do was make it true bare knuckle because you hear a lot of bare knuckle organizations, but they let them take their hands up to the knuckle. That's not true bare knuckle. So I wanted to make it true bare knuckle. So we took the tapes off, made it true bare knuckle. 
I looked at it again and said, how can I make the fight faster? Like, how do we make it more faster and, and it doesn't slow down? And I remember thinking to myself, especially in a stand-up fight, a striking, what slows down a stand-up fight, a striker, is a clinch. So took the clinch out. So now instead of clinching when you get hurt, you got to punch out or use your footwork. So when we did the first show. Clinching is like when you hug and stuff in boxing, yeah, right? Yeah, it's like yeah, when yeah, a guy okay. gets hurt like uh, Evander Holyfield did to Mike Tyson. He kept grabbing him, right? Can't yeah. do that. Now you got to punch in small spaces so it makes the fast the fight fast. Once we got to that point, it's like I remember thinking to myself, how can I help fighters? How can I help fighters because they got three to five years to make money? Then when they're done, they're kicked out. Like they're gone. They're still playing their fights. They're still playing knockout reels. But these guys get no residuals of that. They get nothing. They're gone. And I'm thinking to myself, how can we, how can we, and I have a little understanding of the crypto space, the NFTs and all that. And I was like, how can we, how can we try to figure out how we keep these fighters connected to the fans and to the league Mm -hmm. um, and still make money even after they're done with their careers and while they're having their careers And we were introduced to Captain through one of our team members, and he had the kind of same kind of concept with artists as being able to figure out ways for them to create income through this space. And so that's kind of how our relationship started was when we started talking, there was a lot of synergy there, Mm -hmm. not only with just trying to create something different and disruptive, but also protecting the people that are involved with us. Well, and I think that's so important because I don't think a lot of people actually know that with the UFC and MMA that... They don't get a lot of that benefit, you know, and so having having uh, that platform to to benefit the the sport and to kind of pioneer that, uh, and also to pioneer the the whole new kind of sport that you that you've created is just it's just it's cool and, it, and it's all to benefit the fighters. It's all to benefit the sport, uh, and it's and it's helping people. And so and and I don't think a lot of people really understand um, what that's like uh, uh, unless they've been in it. But that's really well, the cool. Vision, the, the vision really was about making it the experience for the fans better, experience for the fighters better, right. and also being able to one be able to help them keep creating money and keep the fans connected to the fighters. Right. Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. And and uh, and and just shout out to you, Ken. Uh, I don't know if anybody on the call knows Ken or has followed him, but he's he's a he's a big he's a big shot in the in the UFC uh, MMA fighting world. One of my closest friends uh, actually started Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, uh, and and you were a big inspiration uh, to him. And I took he took me to my first Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu class a couple years ago, and I got my butt kicked. It, it, was, it was oh my gosh, I I used muscle groups I didn't even know that I had, and uh, and it, it, but it was so much fun. Uh, but yeah, big shout out to you. And talking with uh, Captain earlier, you just have a lot of you just have a really just impactful story uh, that goes with you as well as a lot of just like fun flavor things in your life. He was telling me that what, uh, what was it that you, you gave Dwayne the rock Johnson, his name or something like that. There's a long story behind that too. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe that was for another day, but I was like, that's what you give him the name. And then, and then with some of the big people that you've worked with and just some of the, uh, just the impact that you've made on that entire industry it's just so cool. And then here you are years later wanting to continue to benefit it and wanting to continue to help out uh, and meeting up with Captain and uh, and coming into the crypto space. It's just going to be such a benefit, like you said, to the audience as well as the fighters. And it's just cool that, that you're still this involved with the sport, helping people out. You've already been an inspiration and now you continue to benefit the industry. So shout out to you. I appreciate that, man. But uh, again, like I said, a lot, lot, I'm telling you, like when we first got together, I tell you, uh, Captain was a big part of being able to put us in this position to be able to even have a, even to be able, almost like we're almost there, able to touch it now. So we're pretty excited about it. That's so cool. Yeah. Turning it back over to you, Cap. You know, something else to bring up though, you know, Ken, everything he's done, no matter where he's ever gone, if you've heard the story, he's been the champion everywhere, right? We're about to make an NFT champion belt because now he's in crypto. He's done it everywhere else, bro. So now that's the thing. Like, we're going to have to have crypto champions. And uh, I'm glad he's on my team because, you know, <laughs> or I'm on his team because no matter what he has done, went to Japan, didn't know anyone, champion, UFC champion, wrestling champion. And not only champion, 
Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame, you know, more to it. There's a YouTube video. I don't know how to pat, we'll get it to you maybe for later. You know, The Rock did his induction speech into the Wrestling Hall of Fame. And it's wow. like, a, it's a very nice speech talking about how Ken gave him his shot and how great a guy Ken is and what wow. he did for wrestling. people. So yeah, man, like it, it, it there's no better name. Like there, I, It's not just a name. There's no better person. Like there's UFC wrestle every everything. And then you got Ken. Like that's what I'm saying. Like I, if they said to me, if you had the option to do this bit and whatever it is, who would you pick? I, I couldn't even imagine that I'd have a Ken Shamrock here right now. That's how awesome. <laughs> yeah, and I mean Ken, honestly, just looking at the history right there behind you, like I got this little painting right here, but looking at your background, it's uh, it's pretty fun. Yeah, you know, there, there's one, th- there's there's some a little small difference between me and Cap when we actually get aggressive is like I torture people but I don't think people feel what he does. <laughs> like, I think that's the end of days for them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so going back to you, uh, uh, Cap, so you got greed token, we got Valor, uh, that's going to be launched here soon, right? Within the next uh, month or two. Well, we're, we're looking at, I think looking at different days, we were supposed to launch, initially when we were looking at it we said let's do the second week of january and then i said you know what i talked to the team you know remember we had that bull run coming it looked like that bull run a couple weeks ago and everything Mm -hmm. was going good and so we said you know let's do a two-week run now we'll launch we were going to launch um last saturday or wait what's today friday yeah last saturday we were going to do the launch And, and as we started getting closer and everything started acting screwy i was like the only reason we were pushing the launch was to catch that run, you know, in the right. bull run. Then when he started getting screwy, sat back and and it looks like, you know, we started building these relationships that were coming about. And I said, you know what? Let's get the relationships. Let's not mess with this screwiness around the holidays. Let's put it off until January. And it looks like, I think like maybe like January 21st would be good. Give it, cool. you know, let people get out of the first week. I like to do a two week marketing plan going into launching a token traditional. Listen, we don't need marketing because we have all the people, but you still right. got to do, I have a traditional, mar- still got to do, I have a traditional marketing plan set up for them for like two weeks of, um, two weeks of um, poo coin ads of like 3000 a day. Why? Poo coin ads are great for one thing, pre-sale. Pre-sale is like, you know, I always joke about BSC people being the bugs to the blue light and the blue light is pre-sale. It's like pre-sale. It doesn't even matter what it is. If they can get a pre-sale, they're going to buy something in the pre-sale. So, you know, I've learned by marketing, not just for my two tokens, because remember, I started out before greed. I launched my first one, my community token to get in and learn everything. Baby Doji New, which is part, you guys will see, it's part of the greed ecosystem. Mm-hmm. And it looks like we'll be seeing a little area. We got a video game being built for him and um, doing some stuff in TCG world. But, you know, everyone in BSC likes, and, and I learned every dollar spent going into the pre-sale you get 10 times more than the dollar spent after. Actually, because I know what I got in pre-sale. Then afterwards, I was like, I just spent all this money. Nothing happened. So, you know, we are going to take advantage of that. And it's more to build the community going in, in the beginning. We want to get the build. Because, listen, at the end of the day, like, yes, we're going to have bigger money coming in. We, we're set up for, like, bigger funds and just different types of investments. But it is about the community. So we're going to build the community that way. So it's a good two week run. So we think about, I think it's the 21st is that Saturday should be the day to drop the, um, the pre-sale. And you know, right now there is a private sale. We say private sale because it was harder going just pre-sale one, pre-sale two. So we call it private sale. Yeah. Is it private? No, it's public. It's a public private sale. It's more <laughs> because it will call it a private sale because you're, you get a, a 30% discount, but you're locked for three months. The difference is, though, what's cool about it is, and I did this with our tokens, too, with the pre-sale, the private sale. Um, you know, since there's rewards, we want people to have their tokens. You can't get, we, it can't be where we're sending them out to you over the course of weeks or months later because you won't get your rewards. So I had my guys code the, um, the contract so that it's delivered to your wallet, but they're locked in your own wallet. And the, so the cool thing is, even if you do the private sale, you're getting 30% more. And you're getting basically 30% more rewards. That's the reason why you want to get it on it. So it's for the diamond hands. If, if you're someone who buys and holds anyway, like me, that's who it's set up for. For the people that are there looking for a quick pump and out, it's not for you. You know, it, it gives you more. You're going to hold it. Like anything I buy, 
I buy and I put away because I buy based on value. I'm not, I'm not, a, right. a, I'm not looking for the chart. I'm not looking for the tweet. Even like I've had mine go whoop up and down up. And they're like, Oh man, did you make money on this? I'm like, I haven't sold bro. I'm, this is long-term. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm even not just mine, but any tokens I buy them, I buy them long-term now. That's what it's for. So yeah, we've got the private sale out now. You can get a discount. It's on the greed ecosystem. Uh, so yeah. So you'll go to greed ecosystem.com. Click on valor and get get to it from there but yeah cool. man we got yeah if uh, if uh some of our moderators if you guys can uh post that uh link in chat just for people to follow that that'd be awesome uh and we want our whole community to go check out valor go check out greed go check out these guys uh and we we want to have a real true partnership with them uh we say this all the time but we we don't look for partners where one part one person just tweets and says hey we're partnering and that's it we look for something where we're actually working together on multiple different areas within the metaverse. And this is an ongoing partnership where, where both sides are benefiting each other. Both communities are hanging out with each other. That's the way a true partnership should be. Uh, and uh, and that's what we get uh, with uh, with Valor and Greed and, and Ken and Cool and Dre and Ted and Captain. Uh, and so, yeah, please go check them out. And uh, if you are from uh, Valor or Greed and you're just hearing about TCG for the first time, same thing. Come into our chat uh, and ask questions. We have open door policy, so you can ask anything under the sun, uh, and uh, and we're very excited for the for for some of the things that I'm going to be announcing even here in just a little bit. But we feel like TCG is going to take over a big part of the the whole metaverse, uh, and we we're excited about bringing in the music industry, bringing in the the fighting industry into the metaverse too. Uh, that said, kind of switching gears uh, real quick, and we're kind of getting towards the end here, but switching gears over to Ted. Uh, first of all, Ted, I saw your your setup there, your computer and stuff. Is that your studio? Uh, yeah, you're talking about. I think Pete started mentioning it, but yeah, this is my office. Yeah, that's uh, that's what you play Fortnite on, right? That's your gaming computer. <laughs> yeah, you won't believe it. We do. <laughs> <laughs> Does Ken come over and play Fortnite with you? Yeah, it's like uh, yeah, you could put up a little ring in there, man, and uh, there, yeah, then then you'd be set over that you don't like. <laughs> um but nah, yeah so he's a bad loser i'm not playing anything with him but yeah switching yeah, things like, over to to you real quick ted uh can you just give us a yeah. little bit of a kind of the, the short term with uh with you in the music industry and with cool and dre and some of the things that you're doing in the next couple months yeah absolutely uh short term is about it is that you said it before ken said the word again but disruptor um, we've been following music and I guess every business has, every industry has disruptors, but this whole crypto, uh, metaverse NFT business changes the rules. And we've had that happen mm -hmm. throughout music business where it came from the, you know, the bricks and sticks being the major labels sitting there being the only way for music to come out. So all of a sudden we had the fight with, uh, what was it? Napster changed everything. Mm -hmm. iTunes disrupted and changed everything. LimeWire. You know, the way business is being done, LimeWire, BearShare, yeah, all those, you know, and then it went to a different uh, format where distribution changed, gave more artists the creative outlet where they didn't have to stand in line and get a printed CD made, pre-sold, brought over to Peaches or whatever record label there was, record stores back in the day, and hopefully they sell. Now, literally, they can, anybody smart enough with technology and able to market themselves can actually go distribute themselves and you know get deals on that basis so the costs are down people that's why you hear a lot more music selection nowadays yeah. you know the same thing with the actual physical art uh with being the visual art or whatnot i think we have a great opportunity to change it up now and to really make a name for ourselves you know give yeah. give artists the creative opportunity to own themselves again similar to what ken was talking about with wrestling and the ufc he, he's saying basically the same thing you have uh, institution that kind of own the rights of everything and people once they're out we're out you know and on a small scale whether they have small residuals or whatnot now we have the opportunity to give the artist majority of the residual you know get depending on what structure they want to come into the business on they just have to market themselves differently recreate themselves and actually you know and, and change the way they do business too yeah so i think it's a hell of an opportunity i'm grateful every day that pete came to me or captain awesome came to me with the opportunity to drive down this lane, but it's exactly what I want to do. It's pretty much champion the artist, you know, as a management as well, and give people the opportunity. And let's let's not kid ourselves. We have the opportunity as a, as a whole community to come up with it and make a lot of money doing it. 
Yeah. So I think that's a no lose situation for us. And well, then it also gives them uh, uh, the opportunity to be discovered. You know, there's so many music uh, people out there that have really good tracks <laughs> and yeah. really uh, and, and really good beats and stuff. And uh, and this is going to give them the platform for them to be discovered and go big time where that might have been whole, very difficult before. I don't need to really tell you all about it being the technical portions of, of the of the NFT world, but the, the that whole NFT smart contract thing, what it does for an artist, whether it be a visual artist or you know regular artist, every time that thing switches hands and sells, the opportunity to get a royalty residual as it increases in value, that's not anything that's happened before. An artist, a visual artist sells a piece of painting for a hundred dollars and someone turns around for a million dollars, the creator of that doesn't make a penny. That right. gives us the opportunity to actually ride with it and actually have you know, it gives somebody the ability to have a living, you know, and the owner stuff. So it's, it's, it's really damn cool, man. That's cool. Yeah. And it, so mm -hmm. Alex, let me ask you, do, do we save it for another time since he brought it up or do we talk about some of our technology on the NFT platform? Uh, we got some time. Yeah. Let's go ahead and talk about it and then we'll kind of wrap up because we got some uh, TCG right. stuff I got to announce too, but I, we got some time so, to, to talk tech. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to get, I figured we might do it another time, but since he talked about that, you know, most people don't realize, and they said, why don't you mint on um, OpenSea? Well, the obvious one was if you try to sell something for 50 bucks and the minor fees are 500 bucks, it's ridiculous. So that's the main reason. And the other reason is it, what most people don't know is no matter what platform you go to right now as an artist, you mint your whatever it is, music, picture, box. You sell it for an Ethereum. You put in your 10% royalties on the back end. You get them for life. No, no, no. You can. But what they don't tell you is if it trades to a platform that doesn't honor the code, you lose your royalties. Mm -hmm. So you can't guarantee it. So how bad would that suck? You know, oh, my God, I just saw my crypto punks that I first sold for $1,000. Now it's sold for $30 million. I'm going to get my $3 million Oh, wait, I lost my royalties. Mm -hmm. It got So the NFT platform we have being built right now is one that uh, will get it's the first one that's going to guarantee the artist their royalties why we're not locking it on ours it'll be allowed to trade to any of the platforms that honor it open sea wearable all of them but the moment it tries to go to an off platform and it's not that people do it purposely there's just so many i'm going to keep it pg bs <laughs> nft platforms coming up because people because people are just they want to say they have it so they put some nonsense out there or whatever yeah. it is but you know it won't allow it to go there and you know what you could keep it on one of the main platforms. And if you don't like it, don't buy it because we're here to protect the artist. And think about that. It's not like, oh my God, you're just protecting the artist. But if you're a holder of our coin and you hear we're protecting the artist, what that means is it brings more artists, which brings more recognition to the coin and makes the holder more money. So at the end of the day, who am I doing it for? The artist or the holder? Both because it works hand in hand. So other than that, the other thing we're building in is, you know, most people don't think of the business aspect of it. Like we're talking to sports people, or let me give you this, the first song we have coming out, this is the juicy stuff. Are you asking about what we're doing? <laughs> we have a bunch of, we have a bunch of new talent that we want to launch that we think is going to be amazing, but you don't come out the gate with some new talent that no one knows about. And when, when we discussed how we were going to do this, there was a bunch of things in the queue that we could use with some big names uh, Ted, you know, Cool and Dre thought about one where the, um, the, the music analytics might have been better with a younger crowd. But then Ted said, no, no, no. We've got a song that we could bring out that's got four iconic, Ted. Is it the word we're using? Historic, iconic. Legendary. 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 <laughs> All those words. So the first song we're going to produce, and we're going to announce it. You know, we were going to do it now, but we might wait till January and then launch it once the NFT platform's out within the next two weeks. So we, we are coming out with our first song, which I could tell you is four legendary names on the one song ready to go. And, and the reason I'm also bringing that up is you got four names. You got Greed Music. I mean, luckily, there's no agents involved or anything else. But let's say right. each of those names had an agent that had to get a cut. You could be at you could be at like 10 people. How do you break that down on OpenSea? You can't. How do you break it down to 10 people? Because here's the thing. You, you got your, maybe you have a fallout with your agent. You got to trust crypto. What if he has the wallet and his wallet gets hacked? See, this is a whole different game now. Mm -hmm. If he loses his wallet and he can't do it, it's on him. But now we take all the responsibility away and we're having it built two things. One, you're guaranteed your royalties. Two, we're going to break it down to a granular level. You want to put 50 damn wallets on there and break it down to a quarter of a percent each, whatever it is, that's fine. Then you let the blockchain handle it. No more worries after that. You don't have to worry about, oh my God, what if he does this? What if he does that? The relationship, maybe you just hate that person. 
in a year. The blockchain handles everything and it's done. So that's something else important. So yeah, it's just a quick, since he mentioned, uh, you know, royalties and all that, I figured I'd bring, we got a lot of other cool stuff we'll handle on the other ones with our tech. Cause we're not just, it, we're not just pretty faces. We got some tech behind I mean, you're pretty too. faces too, though. <laughs> I have to agree, Alex. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and actually someone just uh, uh, typed it in chat and I, I honestly couldn't agree more uh, saying that it's huge that you are designing this whole thing to take care of the artists uh, and yeah. to protect. And, and the fighters. And the fighters. And to protect the, the fighters. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. protect their royalties and protect their hard mm -hmm. work. Uh, and it sucks when people put all that time and effort and hard work in only to have someone snipe it or they don't get it to begin with. And it's a, uh, it, it's, it's a heartbreak and it, and it will cause someone to quit the industry. And so I think, I think that's important to people that are involved in it. Cause you have cool and Dre staples in a business. You have Ken Shamrock staples in a business, yep. but what, what are they both to they They are intrinsically talent and they are out. They're not the actual, you know, industrial uh, industry uh, labels or, or the bricks and mortar themselves. They understand what it's taken, what they've gone through, what it takes to get here and what's been taken from them. Although they might not say it all the time, right. but that's why they, that's why it's so great the fact that these specific people are in place because they're protecting themselves and the creators that come after them and the talent that comes after them as they keep fighting. So that, that's the cool part about it. I love that. I love the ethos of that too. That you're you're mm -hmm. there to protect the artists. Uh, the ethos of you're there to protect the fighters with Ken and. Uh, I mean, that that's only going to progress crypto as a whole. And that's what we should all be moving towards uh, is that as well. And it's all on the public ledger, too. So people can literally see uh, the funds going to the right people and stuff. And, and it's just. Well, there's another level to that, too, too, because it's not and I'm obviously protecting fighters and artists and stuff of that nature. But, you know, it's it's really hard for people that love and follow somebody for a long period of time. And then all of a sudden they're cut out, like they're, yeah. they're just gone and there's no connection to them. This way we keep the fans connected to the artists, even after maybe they are fighters, even after they're gone, right? You still connect them through these different type of opportunities, NFTs, wearables, you know, ecosystems, all this stuff. So there's a lot of different ways to still keep them connected and still follow their fan, their, you know, the fans to follow their heroes. Yeah, well, and Ken, that's such a good point. I'm glad that you brought that up because honestly, that's one of the biggest ideas that we had with creating the metaverse to begin with was to bring people together, to unite people together where we can meet together and do things online, whether we're doing experiences together or we're doing games together or listening to a concert together or supporting each other or visiting businesses. The metaverse is designed to bring people together and connect people which is why it's such a beautiful and perfect partnership with exactly what you guys are trying to create with both artists and fighters. Um, it's just a good marriage. But I really love that you brought that point that we want to keep the fans connected to the fighters. And it's in uh, and, and a lot of this, like we talk about how this is to benefit the artists, this is to benefit the fighters, and, and we want to protect them. Well, this is also to 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 help the audience, to help the fans, you know, and and, and protect them as well. And so that's really cool. Well, and let me give you one more thing, and this is for for TCG and all your community because you talked about the partnership, all right? And, and here, you know, we have property in Decentraland. You know, we bought it back, and I've got two two nice strategic plots. And you know, I talked to after wanting to work with you guys. I don't. We, we're not looking. So, like you said, we're partners. We're not here to just come in and build something in TCG and build all over. So I don't know if you know, but from what I've talked to David about in the partnership, I'm giving over control basically of the properties, not to turn into TCG, but I said, listen, I've got these two strategic properties that are good. They're by a pavilion. You guys could go on greedtoken.com and see what we have. I said, you know, until you guys come out, what I want to do is push everyone from Decentraland to TCG. So we're talking to your guys about building the sickest thing they can build in Decentraland where it's going to be greed, but it's going to highlight Valor, Baby Dodinu, and TCG and show this is what we have in TCG. So for the first fight, we're going to have to stream there until you guys are out. But we are going to use our properties in Decentraland for TCG to push everyone from Decentraland to TCG. Why? Because we can do whatever we want in Decentraland. They can't <laughs> tell us we can't. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> so, so that partnership, I'm like, listen, 
put as much TCG, show this as you, let's promote it, let's push it, let's show how awesome it is, and steal everyone from there to, um, not, you're not gonna have to steal, it's just like, this, Hurting them. Just t- hurting them. Oh, man. Yeah. Hurting them. Capture the audience. Capture All you got to do audience. is show them. All you got to do is show them. That's it. We don't, yeah. have to, we don't have to steal them. You show them. And that's what I told when I, you know, when I was talking to Dave, I said, I see what you guys got, man. I see what's out there. You know, I, I just, you have to have in the beginning, all the big money and the blah, 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 and all the, all the, all the Louis Vuitton and, and Sotheby's, they're all in Decentraland. So all right, let's advertise there and get everyone out. Perfect. Yeah. People are going to go there. We bring, you got the big names, bring them there. We show something awesome and then we move them to you. So it's not just like a partnership. Like we're coming to you. Like we're like, we're willing to work with you, whatever, so that we could promote through all the way through. And even, you know, I've, I've talked to, you know, Ken and Maddie from uh, Valor. You guys are going to be ringside, man. You're going to see in the, in the fight, you guys are good. TCG <laughs> is going to be on the ring. Not just that when they're live streaming the fights and everything, I already said, listen, Maddie came straight out and said, man, they give them commercial space, bro. We will promote as much as they want through yeah. the fight and everything else. So it, I want, to, you know, when they, when you guys say partnership, maybe some other people bring a partnership there, but we got the partnership. We got your back over here on our sides too with everything. And honestly, like that's, that's organic growth. Uh, so we, we're a big believer that we don't need to spend millions of dollars on marketing. Like our product will speak for itself. Uh, and it's not that we think anything else out there sucks or we're not going to talk bad about anything else. We just believe that we have built a superior mousetrap uh, and we got something that is fluidic. It's huge. It's quality. Uh, and when people come in and when they and they see us, especially if they've seen other metaverse projects before seeing us, uh, they're going to get a night and day mind explosion of, oh, my gosh, these guys are far, far more quality than what I've seen before. Uh, and so we truly believe we are going to be pr- producing the most superior quality metaverse uh, out there in, uh, in, and also the biggest uh, out there by far. And that's why we want these strategic partners. We want people like you guys in here that are benefiting the fighters, benefiting the music industry. Uh, and we want to drive traffic and, and have people involved because that's what this whole thing is about is uh, is bringing everyone together. Uh, but we success. love that shout out. And we love that you I got our back. So- I think success um, for people that we bring in, whether they're artists or whether they're fighters, whether they're football players or whatever they do, bringing them in and them having success within the space only helps us because they have such a huge following out there that it only benefits us. So yes, we want to bring them in and yes, we want them to be successful. So we're going to do everything we can to make sure that happens. Awesome. Yeah. And we're not some big corporate company that's, uh, that's all about making money and, and hurting people and and all we're we're uh we got a good team of people that have a, a very similar ethos and high character and that's what we look for in our partners we want to bring in people with that similar ethos uh to benefit everybody as a whole in all these different industries and stuff too and that's something that I think really sets us apart from maybe some of those big corporate uh, uh things that are being created out there is I think people really uh, they're attracted. They're attracted to to the good guys, uh, and uh, and we believe we're the good guys, and we believe you're the good guys, uh, and so and that's that's going to be a cool partnership. And let them big corporate guys come after us. If you see the group you got here, we'll whoop the ass. Yeah, we, <laughs> we got it, man. Listen, yeah, get, he's got the bout circle. We'll put them in the bout circle. You know, we'll show them what's up. <laughs> yeah, we'll make we some money on just we'll... beating them up. Yeah, yeah there's, oh, there's, there's too funny. There's easier teams to mess with for sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, boys, we're we're reaching out that about that hour mark. Uh, I got some things that I got announced with uh, with TCG here in a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna just uh, Captain, you kind of put this whole thing together, um, and so I'll kind of end it with you some closing statements to kind of sign us off. Yeah, no, I just want to say, you know, I'm glad that we finally got all this together. You know, I love it. Like you said, look, we got a group going on here. This isn't like one person one thing and you can see already we're you know we all work together on a project so i know you guys have a metaverse and we're building out an ecosystem to bring into the metaverse and we'll get more to all the i, I didn't get into the other techno technology we're working with that's we'll do more, more amas out there for different. We'll, we'll definitely do more but i think like you said what was important like i, I got into this to build something for the people like i, I stopped here you have a guy who was a business consulting doing really well financially and i just the money didn't drive me anymore i went back into contracting i couldn't you know 
that's a, a total loss of money to go put my life on the line to do something. This has motivated me again to do something before the people. It's not for me. I needed some kind of thing to just, just motivate me again. And it was this. So now you have me doing this for the people. Ted, do, when I say for the people too, like we said, we've already said, by doing it for the artist, we're doing it for the holders because we bring more artists, which brings more recognition to it. So it's really like the, the beauty is the utility brings in the marketing. Listen, these, these recording artists, these athletes, they're going to learn a new term. You know, it's not, hey, what can I get for a tweet? It's, hey, shill your own bag. So listen, guys, everyone in TCG, I know you guys work hard. I know it's a great community and you guys work hard shilling your own bag. The partners we bring in, the big names, all the guys that, that are going to be doing the NFTs with us, the collaborations and everything else, we're going to teach them not to take our money, but they're a partner. We're going to teach them to shill their own bag. So all we're doing together now, we, we've just, we basically become a family. This, yeah. this is now, it's like, like, listen, we've talked about greed, baby, do you know, we have a family. Valor came in, you guys come seeing us, it's a family. We've just added this in. It's like, that's how we treat it. I, when, you know, when people talk about the Sheeb army and the Doge army and, and they started doing that with greed, I was like, no, 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 we're a family. Mm -hmm. Family's more powerful, you know, like we, we, we don't look at it. There's no army. Listen, if it comes down to it, we can take care of business because we're a family. You mm -hmm. got more motivation defending your family. Listen, I was in the military. I still give my life for all them. But let me tell you the different level someone messes with my family. It's a whole nother level. And yeah. that's, that's what this has become. Like we're, we're, we're all, we're all family. And now you guys are in. So, Hey, TCG, welcome to the family or we're to your family. Now we're just, you know, we just grew. Yeah. Likewise. I don't know, I don't know where we're going to fit everyone for Christmas dinner and stuff, but you I was know, just going to say, we need to get a bigger table for Christmas. <laughs> PCG has to hurry up and build our table. Yeah, we'll we'll put yeah, Ken we we'll put it. Ken's address in chat and we'll all meet there for Christmas. Yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, what do they call that delivery food? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> DoorDash it. Uh, Door yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, gentlemen, thank you so much, uh, Captain. Thank you, Ted. Thank you, Ken. Uh, cool and Dre, I know you're in you're in some. 30 mile high building somewhere, but uh, thanks for showing your faces. We want to meet and, and get to talk with you more. I know today was a little weird. You're in a weird time zone. It's super early in the morning uh, and very loud, but thank you for joining. And uh, gentlemen, uh, I'm very excited to work more with you. Uh, I know David and our whole team is excited to work more with you. Uh, this is not going to be the, the last AMA. We're going to be doing a lot more with you. And as everyone can kind of see on chat, these guys have a lot to offer. They have a lot going on. And uh, in an hour is not enough time to cover everything. So we need to uh, we need to meet with you more and kind of hear everything that's going on uh, in the fighting industry, in the music industry. And we are so excited to bring you all into the metaverse. Uh, like I said, this is a this is a partnership that I'm uh, that I'm very excited about, and uh, we couldn't be happier to to, to have you al along for the ride. Super cool. Thank you, Alex. Yes. Uh, have a good rest of your night. Thank you, gentlemen, one more time. Uh, and we'll talk very soon. And we're going to get some links out so you guys can go. Uh, everybody in chat, whether you're on today or you watch this tomorrow, uh, please go check them out. Uh, like I said, very good dudes, very good people um, that are that are out there for the right reasons, helping helping many people out, uh, and very well connected. And it's uh, it's really cool to see what they're doing. And I can't wait to see where you, what's going to happen in the next two months with you. Uh, it's going to be a little crazy. So, uh, yeah, thank you, gentlemen, for joining one more time. Bro, I can't wait to see what's going to happen in the next two months with you. GCG, what you <laughs> we got some doing. things. Yeah, yeah we got stuff. some things. We're, we're going to be going places together. The, the, we're going to get in that big family car, and we're going to be going some places. Good. Sweet. All well, right. gentlemen, thank you so much for jumping on, and we'll uh, we'll talk soon. Thank right. you. Awesome. Thank you, man. It's great being here. Yeah, I appreciate you jumping on. Thanks you. Bye, everybody. Bye. All right. <clears throat> okay. Well, uh, how about that? What a cool partnership that we have. Uh, actually, two partnerships with, with uh, both Valor and Greed. We got some things going on. So, like I said, uh, thank you for staying on the call. We've actually, our, our uh, amount of views uh, right now have been going up. I got some things that I'm going to share with you uh, that's going on with TCG. Uh, thank you for being patient. I know this AMA is going a little bit longer than what we typically do, but it, it's worth it. That that was a good hour uh, meeting those people. But I'm going to go right into uh, what's kind of been going on. So 
first, I'm going to give you just a quick uh, two-week recap. Uh, this is kind of what's happened in the last week. So if, if you don't know, if you if, if you haven't been catching our AMAs or our, our socials, I'm just going to go down. I'm not going to go into detail on anything just for sake of time. Uh, you can go check out our, our channels and our socials. Uh, but this is just kind of what we've been working on, on the development side. So our studio, uh, the this is from last time. They were building a cinematic trailer for both Elon Gate and uh, uh, Wall Street Bets. Which, by the way, Wall Street Bets, I believe, don't quote me on this, but I believe they were uh, the ones that actually connected us with Captain Awesome and this whole thing. So, if you're from Wall Street Bets, uh, thank you guys uh, kind of for helping us put this whole thing together, I believe. Uh, don't quote me, like I said. Uh, we, uh, we, we launched this cool Starship trailer. Uh, we talked about how we're going to have some TCG merch. Uh, I actually got a cool little picture Literally uh, an hour before this AMA started, uh, our merch company is, is making some stuff and they sent this out. So we're going to have some TCG swag here in a little bit. And it looks so cool. It looks so cool. So we're going to get our merch up and going for everybody. That's been a highly requested thing for a while. Um, our studio is also building a whole art gallery right now. And they're doing a bunch of 3D modeling uh, with the team. If you didn't know, our team's actually been... Uh, getting expanded and they're bringing on more and more as as you can see we got a lot going on right now so we've been needing more developers and uh, and it's been really cool we updated our map our interactive map on the website uh, and it's just loads a lot faster it's a, it's a, it, it zooms in really good it works uh, it works fantastic uh, it's about I think like four to five times faster than it was before so they've done a lot of optimizations on our interactive map thank you studio uh, they're uh, currently working on the in-game menu systems as well as the user interface, uh, which is really neat. Uh, we're going to be showing you some videos of that coming up here in a little bit. She's blockchain savvy, uh, create a video with us, which we actually showed on, uh, on AMA 16. So this is 18. So on AMA 16, we showed a cool video that she created for TCG. Uh, in fact, it's actually on our main homepage. If you go to tcg.world, scroll down you'll see a cool uh, uh, educational video that Danielle from She's Blockchain Savvy has put together for us, which is really cool. We also did a partnership with Crypto Mom. If you have not checked out that AMA, go check out that AMA with, uh, with Jace. Uh, we love Crypto Mom and her daughters and everything that they plan on doing within the metaverse is really cool. We were also in Decentral uh, in Miami. We, we had a couple of our teams sent there. Here's some pictures. Uh, Joshua and Eric, who is, who is on our team, uh, went out there and made a bunch of connections uh, at Decentral. In fact, we're going to be announcing some things that we have. Uh, um, yeah, we've, we've got some things going that happened because of this trip uh, that are going to be coming up. So uh, it was a very productive trip is, is uh, all I will say on that. But yeah, so and there's Eric and Joshua right there. Thank you, gentlemen, for going out and representing TCG and uh and uh, and meeting with uh, with multiple different people, they also did a big rooftop party with Jamie, the CEO of Wall Street Bets, uh, and they both said the party was incredible. They met some really big people in crypto. Like I said, we'll talk about later. <clears throat> and then we also announced a couple weeks ago that we're going to be doing new exchanges. Uh, we also are having YouTubers uh, that are uh, doing videos on us now. A uh, big shout out to Crypto Gains and Ryan Patrick who are creating YouTube videos without even contacting us. They're literally just creating TCG videos and talking about our project, sending people our way, uh, and their videos are awesome. Uh, and so, and, and we're gonna post those again, the moderators, if you don't mind posting uh, the Crypto Gains video and the Ryan Patrick video, great energy, they've done a really good job. Shout out to them. Uh, we talked about how we have a massive partner incoming which we announced uh, earlier this morning, as well as right now. We have a lot, we have a lot going on, uh, as you can see. Uh, and then we have our development page on TCG World now officially up and loaded. So real quick, I just want to show you that. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but uh, and, and let me move my uh, video here so that my ugly mug doesn't block it. But this is our development page. So if you go right up here, this is our main page, tcg.world. And if you go right up here to where it says game, um, this is kind of our journey. This is our history of TCG on kind of where it all started 
And I'm just going to kind of go all the way down here. And I'm just going to kind of scroll up and show you just a couple quick things. Like I said, I'm not going to go into crazy detail because I have some announcements that I got to make. But starting from the bottom, this is kind of where the whole idea started. Uh, and here you can kind of see we're, we're, we're playing around with uh, development with our uh, world generation tool that we've kind of, that we've created. Uh, and as we and this is back in uh, in June on this one. But as we go up, you can kind of see what the early stages of TCG world look like. And here's a here's a test scene that this test scene right here is actually what David pitched to me when I first heard about TCG. I met I met with David and he said, let me show you something. And he showed me this. Uh, and uh, I just remember at the time, like, oh, my gosh, this is going to be revolutionary if if they're already this far in production and it was just so fluidic. But yeah, just look at the graphics then compared to the graphics now. It's a little bit of a night and day difference. So that's kind of where it all started. Uh, and then you can kind of see we're getting a little bit, uh, things are starting to take shape. Uh, our world generation, our water, our grass, our our flora. We created the 2D map with the with the different uh, plots and regions. Uh, and as you as we kind of go up, you can kind of see that we start creating more and more. Uh, and you can see from this video right here, we created horse. I remember uh, this was like uh, maybe a couple weeks after I joined TCG, and David showed me this video, and he was like, "Man, check this out!" And I looked at it, and I was just like, "Man, it, it's so fluidic. It works so well." And at the time, we were just like, "Man, this is so stinking cool." Uh, but, uh, yeah, just look at how far we have come. It's kind of crazy, right? To, to go back and, and look at this. So as I scroll and scroll up more, you start to see that we start adding more, we start updating more. We, we add in more water, more sky, more mountains, more grass, upgraded the trees, upgraded the avatars. Uh, you'll see the avatar here looks a lot different than, uh, than the avatar here, <laughs> Uh, and as we continue to go up and up and up, you start to see that that things really start to take shape and TCG world just starts to look so cool. And this is where people start to say, wow, this is going to be a, a pretty big game changer within the metaverse industry. And just some of these pictures now are just so awesome. Like I'm going to zoom in on this one here. Let's see if it lets me. Yeah, look at that. Just it looks so good. This is this is our our north section with uh, with our jeep in there, uh, and you can really start to see that uh, that things are growing. They're being developed, and this is just um, over the the span of a couple months. Uh, and then you, we have Starbase, our Starship's base here, and it continues to grow and grow and grow. We don't even have December in here yet, and I'm really excited to see when we put in December, as we have a lot going on. So uh, we wanted you all to see kind of the journey of where we started and where we are now, and especially where we are going with our white paper. Uh, we're very excited for, uh, for what's coming next with the TCG world. And like I said, we believe we're going to have a massive foothold in the entire metaverse industry, not only for how big our game is going to be or our world is going to be, but the quality behind it. Um, as you can see in these photos, is just uh, it, it's pretty stunning, um, especially compared to some other metaverses that are out there already. Um, we feel like we're creating something pretty special. So that's what we announced last week. Um, now for this week, uh, and like I said, thank you for being patient with me. Let me put my picture back here on the left. <clears throat> um, uh, and thank you for spending uh, over an hour on our AMA today. Or if you caught our other two AMAs, you've been over a couple hours this week. Thank you for your time. But I got some things I want to share with you right now. So these are the kind of development updates that are going for this week. So uh, we had a partnership with NAFTR uh, yesterday. We have a partnership with Project Nightfall. Uh, I want to stop for a quick second on this one. I am so impressed with Aegon and Sonya. If you have not watched our AMA with Project Nightfall earlier today, uh, please make this uh, make this a priority uh, sometime later today or, or tonight. This partnership is something I am so freaking excited for. Uh, we actually talked to them a little bit before and after the AMA. And uh, saying that they're good people is just uh, an understatement. Uh, literally two of the nicest people 
I have come across in business and crypto as a whole. And they have so many plans of what they're going to be doing in the metaverse and how they're going to be helping out people. Um, this is a big deal. And, and I really mean a big deal. This isn't a partnership where they do one little tweet and then, and then that's it. Uh, in fact, uh, they were talking about on the AMA earlier today that moving into TCG world is going to be a big strategic move for their entire organization. They're going to be doing a lot with us. Uh, and like I said, two of the nicest, uh, just highest character quality of people that I've come across, please, if you have not looked at the AMA, go check it out. Huge shout out to these two uh, for uh, for getting integrated into the metaverse and working with us. Uh, also, we announced that uh, Danielle from She's Blockchain Savvy is going to do a promo for us. So she has an advanced, she has a free course right now uh, on her website, but she's also going to be giving 50% off her advanced course. And so what I love about Danielle, she's really easy to understand. So we got a lot of people that are new to crypto, right? Uh, what's Bitcoin? What's blockchain? What is this whole cryptocurrency thing? She has classes that are, that are set up and she's doing a cool thing till the end of the year where you get 50% off. So normally it's 300, uh, but you get 50% off. So it ends up being 150. Uh, and then she's going to give $50 of TCG coin uh, upon completion of the course, <clears throat> which as the price of TCG coin goes up, that $50 goes up. So it literally could pay for the whole course in itself or even multiple times over, uh, depending on what happens. But uh, yeah, so she's doing that really cool uh, uh, promotion for us. We also just launched a cool video this week with uh, Retro DeFi. In fact, I believe I have it right here. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you this video in case you haven't caught it yet. Really neat, huh? Isn't that cool? So our studio right now is developing a bunch of different videos for our different partners, as well as gameplay uh, and high def videos uh, that are cinematic of the metaverse too, uh, which I believe brings me to, uh, oh, in a little bit, I'm gonna announce that. <clears throat> we also had a meme competition this week where if you did some cool memes, we we're gonna give you some prizes. And we had some really good memes that came out about TCG. Quick shout out to our community. Uh, we got some meme game in the TCG community. There were so many memes. And uh, in, in absolute honest with, honesty with you right here, I actually laughed out loud in real life over some of the memes that, that the community has created. We got some real big meme game. Uh, and then on top of that, we also have a fan art contest. Uh, this is still going on right now where you can win a, uh, you can win a prize just for fan art. Uh, we're going to be giving away a gold plot uh, to first, silver plot to second, avatar to third. Uh, if you if you have if you're an artist or you like to create, uh, check out our social. I believe this is on Twitter uh, to where you can uh, paste your creation there. Uh, and so yeah, if you if you have an artistic side to you, go and paste a, a fan art. Uh, we would love to we would love to see uh, what what the community can create. And we got a lot of creative people in our community. Uh, now this next one is a big one and I'm going to stop for a second on this one uh, because our uh, plot sales right now are flying. They're way over target and why this is a big deal for you because a lot of people, they look at the charts or they'll check the price, but they don't necessarily see all the plot sales going on. Uh, and I'm not going to give any numbers, but we had a target number set and this target number, it, it wasn't like a minimum goal, like, hey, if we hit this, we can keep the lights on. It was a number where, hey, if we hit this number, that means we are having steady organic growth. 
We are going exactly along the path that we want to be on. We're, we're growing uh, quickly and steadily. Um, that was our target number. Uh, and that, that was kind of the goal associated with it. Well, for November, um, our target number, we were over 500% over 500% of what our target goal was for November. For December, uh, I'm not going to say the exact number, but I am going to say that it is over 500%. What this means uh, for the project as a whole is we are seeing a uh, an immense amount of growth with pro plot sales, which is only going to give us more capital to put into the world, to put into development, to grow the team, to grow the company, to get on more exchanges, to get on bigger exchanges, uh, to do big marketing campaigns and stuff. Um, we are, like I said, well over what our target goals were. And it's just really neat because all of this has happened organically. We don't have any VCs or venture capitalists. We don't have any massive hype marketing campaigns going out. We have built everything with organic growth of you guys talking to people, of our partners coming in and hooking us up with big names. We have YouTubers that are literally creating videos of us uh, and buying plots in the metaverse and sending a, a bunch of people our way that we didn't even contact. Normally with a company, you go out to a, a YouTuber and you say, hey, can you do a video on us and we'll pay you X, Y, Z or that YouTuber will come to you and say, hey, I'm a YouTuber and this is my channel and if you want, I can do a video of you and, and these, are my, these are my prices if you want me to do a video. Ah, uh -uh. these YouTubers on their own have created awesome videos that have thousands upon thousands of subscribers and sending people our way <clears throat> and our community has grown. Our Telegram is now over 11,000 members. Our Facebook is growing, our Discord's growing, everything is growing uh, and it's all done organically. And so for, I just wanted to let everybody know, just to give you some excitement, uh, because you don't see the plot sales in the charts. This all happens kind of behind the scenes. But let me tell you that we are way over what we initially uh, were, were targeting for TCG, which again, just means more capital for the project, uh, bigger and better exchanges, more exchanges, more development, more team growing, more company growing. Uh, we're in a really good spot. Uh, so when I say we're excited about the next three months, I mean, we're really excited for the next three months. So I just wanted to give that to you because maybe you, you don't see some of that behind the scenes, but uh, we're pretty excited. We're pretty excited with the organic growth that has happened with TCG already. <clears throat> and the announcements keep coming. So right now we have multiple cinematic videos, like I said earlier, that are going to be getting released. We're not going to do them today because we've already done a lot of announcements uh, in the last day and a half already. Uh, so, uh, but in, in our future AMAs, make sure to catch, uh, we got some cool things that we're working on right now. Um, we're also, uh, uh, continuing our upgrades and, and building out our public demo where we can get people in and play in the game, uh, and, and kind of see a sectioned off area of the metaverse. This is something that we're really passionate about. It's something that we're not rushing either. We really want when we get a public demo for it to just work well, uh, and play well. And we care more about quality than anything else. And you've seen that, hopefully, if you've been with us for a while, you've seen that we're really big on quality than we are about just rushing out a project to meet a deadline. Uh, it always bugs me when major game companies do that. They'll rush out something and it's just like, why don't you just wait three months and make it, make it a solid product first before launching? Always kind of frustrates me. <clears throat> we also started our altcoin launch pad. So we're going to have a whole section in the in the metaverse uh, and where we're, we're going to be featuring different altcoins where they can come in, they can show their projects. Uh, we just partnered with uh, with Arcade Network, who has some pretty cool uh, utilities in the gaming world. Uh, and I'm a big gamer. So so looking at some of the utilities and the things that they plan on doing is actually really it's really cool. Uh, so we, we uh, initiated our launch pad and this is a big one. Uh, we've said this uh, like a couple weeks ago that we're going to be signing on a new exchange and then it turned into we're going to be signing on two exchanges. And then recently, I believe last mm, week, maybe a week, two weeks, we said actually we're going to be doing three exchanges. Well, that number has grown one more. Uh, we're actually going to be signing on four separate exchanges for TCG, four separate ones. Uh, and we are also going to be getting into the Ethereum blockchain. 
which is a big deal as a lot of people out there are really big with Ethereum. Uh, and it's important that we have avenues for Ethereum people to come in and have that blockchain uh, compatibility uh, between everything. <clears throat> so yeah, we're gonna be getting on four exchanges. Now, uh, just so everyone knows our plan with exchanges, we don't plan on just doing a couple exchanges and calling it good. We actually plan on doing multiple exchanges, small to medium. Uh, and we want to really get TCG out there into all the kind of different areas of the world uh, and get a lot of different access. And then, of course, we are going to be making plays for the big exchanges, uh, the ones that are really widely known with people. Uh, so we always get that question. Are you going to be working or trying to get here? Yep, absolutely. But first, before we do that, we want to get out on multiple exchanges. We want to really spread uh, the roots of TCG all over the world. And so that being said, we're going to be getting on four exchanges and we're going to be launching on the Ethereum blockchain, which is really, that's a, this is a big upgrade by the way. Uh, and then, uh, I, uh, I won't announce today. I'm going to leave this for a future one, but we have new YouTubers that are coming into, uh, that, that are working with us right now behind the scenes. And, uh, it went, they're pretty fairly big YouTubers uh, as you got to see, you got to see one of them today with project nightfall. Although he's, he's more, they're more in the uh, Facebook side of things. I think they have what they said, like a million followers on Facebook. They got 1.4 million subscribers on YouTube, but we also are going to be bringing in new YouTubers, uh, and talking about us. Like I said, we're, we're all about organic growth. Uh, and so we're going to be having a lot of organic growth and, and we're going to be hitting mainstream. Uh, as you can see today with, uh, with, with, uh, project nightfall launched earlier and then with Valor and Greed and Ken and, and Cool and Dre and Ted and Captain Awesome, you can see that now we are entering in the mainstream industry uh, in, and when I and different areas of mainstream. We're, we're getting that traction and we're moving forward. Uh, David has been a very busy CEO uh, behind the scenes, uh, securing all these deals and getting everything put together for us. He's, he's, a, he's a flipping genius when it comes to strategic partnerships. But yeah, we were kind of entering in the uh, in the mainstream industry. <clears throat> and then this is my last one. Uh, we are right now working with another blockchain team to actually launch on a third blockchain. So as you know, we're already with Binance Smart Chain. With our four exchanges that we're gonna be announcing, we're gonna get on the Ethereum blockchain well, we're working with the team right now that's actually going to put us on our third blockchain. And I'm curious to see if anyone uh, can maybe guess which one that is. We will not. We will neither confirm or deny it. Uh, but when I say we've been working busy behind the scenes, uh, we mean it. We're we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be doing some some big waves in the crypto world, and we're very excited to not only get on Ethereum but also to get on this mystery uh, third blockchain. Uh, like I said, we have a lot going on right now. Uh, and being honest, uh, all of this that we've talked about today is about 20 to 30% of everything that we have yet to announce to everybody. We, we needed honestly like six AMAs if we were to get everything through this week. So uh, know that you have a, a team of hardworking people actually getting stuff done and, uh, and making things happen for the benefit of our investors and for the benefit of our community and for the benefit of our partners, uh, we're working very hard to make uh, this metaverse a, a big deal. Uh, and uh, the fruits of that labor, uh, you're gonna, you're, hopefully you've already seen the fruits of, fruits of all that hard work, but you're really gonna see uh, some fruits here in the next month and two. So uh, yeah, a lot going on right now. So. Uh, we are about an hour and a half into this AMA. I'm going to just give it a, just a couple quick questions. Uh, I always like to end with a couple uh, question and answer session, but today went a little bit over. So let me switch gears and I can answer some questions uh, in chat. If you have any, I'd be happy to answer some. I'm not going to give it a lot of time just because uh, you've already been in, in chat for, for a while. <laughs> I see a lot of, uh, I see a lot of guesses. Uh, within uh, of ever, who everybody thinks that third blockchain is. Uh, yeah, maybe someone said it already. Hmm. Who knows? 
Yeah. So uh, people talking about the plots. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I wanted to take a second and really talk about that. Cause again, you, you don't really see all the plot sales and going behind the scene. I, I mean, that's really the life of the company is uh, all that coming in because that's our development. That's everything else. And the fact that we are so over what our initial targets were, were that just means that there's going to be a lot of benefit uh, to TCG coming up as capital and everything have been uh, significantly increased. And it also shows that metaverse is the next thing. This many people are coming in. Uh, it, it's pretty nuts. And so, uh, yeah, uh, so thank you for shouting that out. Something that we're really excited about. Uh, yeah, thank you, Roy. <clears throat> oh, Chris here from uh, from Wall Street Bets. Uh, hey, Chris, thanks for popping in. Yeah, we're, we're so excited to have you guys on our team. We're so excited uh, to work with Wall Street Bets. If you don't know, Chris is the, he's the, uh, the head of the Facebook group, which is like 400, 500,000 people in there. Uh, good to see you, Chris. Yeah, a lot of people talking about four exchanges. Yeah, uh, like I said, that number's been going up and up and up and up and started with one and then it turned into two and then it went to three. And then uh, as of today, I got the green light from David to say, tell everybody that we're actually gonna be on four, <laughs> which is really neat. Uh, people talking about Project Nightfall. Yes, yeah, so Project Nightfall, they have 11 million followers on Facebook, 11 million. Uh, and then they have, I think it's 1.4 or 1.5 million subscribers on YouTube. They have such a big following. Uh, in fact, on our call with them earlier, we had thousands, like thousands of people uh, viewing that uh, viewing that AMA. And even afterwards, it's crazy to see how many people viewed that video. They're so cool. Uh, Aegon and Sonia, if you're, if you're watching this right now, we really appreciate you too. Uh, what great energy and ethos you both share. Uh, very cool. Very cool. Uh, people saying David is the best CEO ever <laughs> from Andy. Yes, David. Uh, dude, that guy works so hard. Uh, and, uh, and, and if, just for everyone to know, we're on a, we're on a, a leadership chat with David and he's just all the time posting. I'm meeting with this. I'm meeting with these people. I'm meeting with this group. I'm meeting with this exchange. That guy really never turns off. Uh, and bless his heart because he has a whole family of like four kids or five kids or something like that and a couple dogs. And he just puts so much time and blood, sweat and tears into into TCG, which is really cool. <laughs> Mark said, let's extend this to two hours. Oh, man, we, we've done that before. It has gone way over. And I'm happy to go a little bit over. I try to keep him around an hour. But let's be honest, Captain Awesome and Ted and Ken and Cool and Dre like that's worth spending a little bit more time on. <laughs> Which color of the merch are you going to get? Yeah, we're going to, so Ben right now, uh, we actually have Ben, uh, Josh, uh, and I believe Mark uh, also working on it too. Uh, working, we, we have, we actually have a whole merch company that we're, that we're starting to get everything created. It's been something that has been highly requested. People are like, Hey, I want a hat or Hey, I want a sweatshirt or Hey, I want a t-shirt. And, uh, and we agree. We want, we want that stuff too. Uh, I want, I'd wear it proudly all over town and people be like, what's that? What's the metaverse? And I, oh, I'd, I'd give them an earful. So yeah, we're, we're working on our merch right now and we're, we're getting some pretty cool designs from them. Oh, Julie, women in cryptocurrency are so excited. Yeah. Um, uh, so Julie, uh, hosts a, a Facebook group called women in crypto. Uh, my wife has joined it. And it was really cool because uh, talking after the AMA with Project Nightfall, uh, it was it was just uh, uh, Jason, I, and Aegon and Sonia, and Sonia has joined the Women in Crypto group, and she uh, she's newer to crypto herself, and she's like, oh man, everyone's so friendly, everyone just answers all the questions, and it's just such a good culture here, and she was very impressed uh, with Women in Cryptocurrency. So kudos to you, Julie, for putting such a cool group together and making it such a warm, inviting place. That was really neat to kind of hear that shout out from Sonia earlier today. And my wife loves it too. She doesn't really understand crypto or anything. So for her to have a place that she can go to and just kind of watch and observe and ask questions, love it. Oh, and Julie just said she just hit 7K members. 7K, that's nuts. When we were originally talking with Julie when I did the AMA with her, I think we just hit that uh, 1,000 mark, I believe, Julie. Uh, with women in crypto, and and that was not even that long ago. Gosh, that was just what, like a month, maybe a month and a half ago, and you're already up to seven k people in that group. That's so cool. 
Good job with that. Yeah, Mike's saying he's very excited about this project. Uh, thank you, Mike. We are too. And, uh, and like I said, we have so many announcements to give. And honestly, it's just as exciting for us to give you these big announcements and things that we are doing as it is for you to, uh, to, to hear on these AMAs. It's like buying your kids Christmas presents and you just can't wait for them to open it up. It's kind of what it feels like for us. Um, yeah, thank you so much for that shout out. A lot of positivity on just kind of everything that we've been doing the last couple of days. And honestly, thank you guys so much. If you've been on our, we, we did a lot of AMAs. We have never done a week where we had three of them back to back like, like we did. Uh, so if you did catch uh, this AMA or multiple AMAs, like thank you for spending time with us. We want you to know everything that we're doing. Uh, and we believe we're headed in the right direction uh, by a lot. We're, we really believe that we are, we're going to take over a massive, uh, a, a massive footprint within the metaverse industry. Uh, but we want you there to be with us the whole way. We don't, we don't want to be a company that just kind of does all this development behind the scenes uh, and doesn't really communicate everything that we're doing. We take the approach of we would rather over communicate. We would rather have everybody literally be on this whole a journey with us, uh, which is why we do so many AMAs. Uh, we were just doing one a week for a while. Now it's becoming two a week. Uh, and then this week it was three, <clears throat> probably won't be per three, uh, uh, <laughs> every single week, but, uh, thank you so much for seriously, for, for taking time out of your day, whether you watch this live or you watch this after the fact, like that's really neat. We really appreciate everybody. <clears throat> uh, David, David said, who's ready for the next Bob? And he got like 10 likes immediately. <laughs> Everyone says born ready right now. Yeah, uh, David's been working very hard, everybody, very hard. Like I said, today's AMA, uh, and actually the last three AMAs, this is only 20, 30% of everything that we have to show you. Uh, there's there's a lot going on right now. There's a lot of big names that we're meeting with, and uh, and uh, we're very excited to uh, to announce everything. We feel like we're on a very good path with, uh, with TCG World at the moment. Oh, man. David just stirred the pot with saying, uh, with saying he wants to hear another bomb. Ah, uh, he said he's going to save it for a while. Okay. So he's, uh, so David's going to save a big bomb maybe for tomorrow or maybe later this week. Uh, but we have, uh, like I said, we got, we got big news for you. Um, I wonder which one it is. I'm going to message him after chat. I think I know which one, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> everyone says announce it now, announce it now. <laughs> oh man, David stirring the pot. So everybody, thank you so much for joining us on this AMA. Big shout out to, to Captain, what do you say? M Mystical Fairy, Captain Mystical Fairy, awesome. Uh, as well as Ted and Ken Shamrock, uh, MMA legend. Uh, and thank you, Cool and Dre, even though we didn't get to see too much of you because you're at, you're at a, a place that was pretty loud. We look forward to, to hearing from you in the future and doing a future AMA with you. Congrats on Grammy award-winning uh, material too. That's crazy. That's so cool that you guys have accomplished so much. But yeah, big shout out to, to everybody. Uh, also shout out to Naftor, who we partnered with yesterday. Shout out to Project Nightfall, who we partnered with this morning. Shout out to Valor and Greed, who we partnered with 30 minutes ago. <laughs> And, uh, and big shout out to the community guys. We, we can't honestly do any of this if it wasn't for you. Uh, and we believe, uh, that we have one of the strongest communities in all of crypto with TCG. We have such a positive chat. Our moderators work their tails off answering your questions as well as our real estate team. Uh, and we, we want a helpful chat that's warm and inviting and big shout out to everyone that's helping out. A lot of these people guys are on volunteer work, just saying, Hey, I want to help out the project. I want to be a moderator. I want to answer questions. And, uh, and they take a lot of time out of their day to, uh, to provide a welcoming place in TCG. And hopefully you've been in our Telegram or you've been on our Facebook and you've seen just how open and friendly we are. It's kind of our company image. Uh, and so we love, uh, we want to have a chat that's professional and warm and inviting. And uh, yeah, big shout out to our moderators and real estate team and our leadership for just always being there to answer everybody's questions. Uh, and thank you so much, everybody, for, for jumping on this AMA. Appreciate the heck out of you. Uh, we got some big things that we're going to work on over the weekend. And we might do one more AMA before Christmas hits. Uh, we'll have to talk about that. 
But uh, uh, whether it's morning, afternoon, night, wherever you are in the world, appreciate you so much. Have a good rest of your day. And uh, and we'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye, everybody. future has begun the metaverse is calling you to be the best you can become so come on